I promised a very long time ago I was never going to paint another Space Marine for the Heavy Contra series, but Games Workshop sent me this box, and you see, that's when the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. Hello fellow Hordes of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to a very, very special Heavy Contrast episode. This is the Heavy Contrast Marines, Emperor's Children, to celebrate the 50,000 subscribers. I know, I know, I'm very lazy, please don't judge me. But anyway, I've been itching to paint another Space Marine and I thought this would be the perfect occasion to kill two pairs with one stone by doing a Space Marine and also doing it purple, which I haven't done yet. And of course, my favorite Chaos Legion, Emperor of Children, is the perfect target. So, let's get cracking. As you can see, we are starting from a base coat of Wraithbone, and I'm going to start with the main armor. And for this, I'm going to use a very beautiful violet mix that is five parts Volubus Pink and one part Talasar Blue. If you want to know how to apply contrast paints well over flat surfaces, I will leave a link to the video explaining that in the top right corner. After this first coat is dry, I'm going to apply a second one because I want a richer purple, and this is a bit paler for my taste. But a second coat will leave this perfect. With a second coat of the contrast mix applied, we can move into the highlights. And I'm going to start with a mix of one part screamer pink and one part cacophony purple. And then we'll do with this is a chunky edge highlight. On some of the most rounded parts, like here on his knee, you can do a spot highlight or a sanithal highlight towards the top of the knee pad, for example, like here. So we have more of a gradient going on. I haven't finished highlighting everything, but just for the sake of speed, I'm going to move into the second highlight, and then I will do everything. For this, I'm going to use Emperor's Children, and I'm going to do the thinnest edge highlight I can. And on top of this small edge highlight with the same color, I'm also going to add a bit of weathering. Just some random scratches, dots, etc. With this, less is always more, so be careful here. And of course, on the rounded part, which I added a highlight there. I'm going to take this Emperor of Children, thin it down very very thin and do a small highlight. With that highlight done and all the weathering applied, I'm going to move into the next one. This is a one-to-one -one mix of Emperor of Children and a Screaming Skull. And what I will do is the same thin edge highlight but more concentrated towards the corners. Just like that, very carefully. Again, it doesn't really matter if you cannot do a thin edge highlight as I can. The important thing here is that you do the thinnest one you can. And I will also apply a dot of this just where any weathering meets the highlight. For example, this is a very obvious place. And 
and with that highlight done I'm going to move into the last one. This will be pure Screaming Skull. And this will be just very, very small dots, just on the most prominent corners. With all the highlights done on all of the armor, we can move on to base coating the black details and for this I'm going to use Mechanicus Thunder Grey. And as you can see I have already started with that process because it's a very long one, so just take Mechanicus Thunder Grey and paint with this all of the details that will be black. Be very, very careful with your highlights here. You don't want to mess up all the hard work that you've done. I'm going to choose to paint all the leather black as well, so that will be black. But I will leave the loincloth to be painted white. With everything that I want to be black base coated, with Mechanicus Under Grey I'm going to apply Black Templar over all of those details. Again, being extremely careful here, you really don't want to mess up. With the black temper now drawing, going to move into highlighting the black parts on the armor. I'm not going to highlight the leather. Now I'm going to use another recipe for that just to add a bit of variety. And for the black parts on the armor, that is the rubber bits and any other black parts that you want to add, I'm going to start with a thin edge highlight of Dunstone. I'm going to skip the thick edge highlight here. Makes no sense for these details. With that first highlight on, I'm going to move into Administratum Grey. And as with the armor, this will be just more concentrated towards the edges. And now as a final step on the black details, I'm going to take Ulthu and Grey and I'm going to do a dot highlight just on the top facing corners. And here on the rubber ridges, I'm going to do one here at the edge. And here I'm going to pick the center of the Administratum Grey highlight and do a dot. With the neutral black parts done, I'm going to move into the leather and for this I'm going to go for a cold black, so there is some differentiation between them. And for the first step I'm going to do a thin edge highlight using Thunderhawk Blue. And on top of this I'm also going to do some weathering. This is the same as I did with the armor basically. This will help convey the idea that this is leather and not cloth. And for the second highlight I'm going to use Fenrisian Grey. And as before I'm going to do another thin edge highlight but this time more focused towards the edges of each part. And to finish off the leather details, I'm going to do a dot highlight with Ulthu and Grey again. Just picking the corners here. So with all the black now painted, there is a very noticeable difference between the cold and the neutral side, creating more variance and an easier to read miniature. And now it's time to face the greatest fear of all Chaos Space Marine players, the trim. And for this I'm going to do Retributor Armor because we want a rich, intense cold for this. And as always, be very careful with the already painted parts.
And with all the trim now base coated, I'm going to shade it. And for this, I'm going to start with an overall layer of dark wood flesh. Again, the key here is to maintain that intense, that saturated gold look. And dark wood flesh works fantastically well for that. The layer of dark wool flesh is now done and I'm going to add a little bit more shading on this gold. And for this I'm going back into the base coat mix. For the armor this is 5 part volubus pink and 1 part talasar blue. And I'm going to apply this into the areas where I want more shading. Using purple to shade gold gives a fantastic warm and beautiful result. I'm going to apply this around all of the rivets and again areas that I want a bit more shading. Note that I'm avoiding the edges here. With that extra shading now done, I'm going to move into highlighting it. I'm going back to Retributor Armor for the first highlight. I'm just going to go back and regain that nice vibrant gold. For the areas of trim, this will be mostly a thick edge highlight, maybe a center highlight on some point here and there. With that first highlight done, I'm going to move into the second one. This will be a one-to-one -one mix of Stonehold Silver and Retributor Armor. And I'm going to do a very thin edge highlight here. I know, I know, edge highlighting with metallics can be difficult, but it's really the same, you just need practice and go in slowly. And excuse me if I don't do the rest now, but I want to show you the last final step on the gold, that is the final highlight using pure stonehole silver. And I'm just going to do very small dots of this in the brightest parts. With all the gold now finished, it's time to paint all the steel. And for this I'm going to use Iron Hand Steel. I personally prefer a lighter tone for my base steel, but you can use Lead Belcher if you prefer a slightly darker hue. With all the steel now base coated, I'm going to shade it using Basilicanum Grey. I usually use Black Tempera Thin Down with Medium, but I want to try Basilicanum Grey, just for the sake of variety. Here on these balls, I'm not going to apply it all over, just on the recesses and on the bottom. With all that done, it's now time to highlight all the steel. And for this, I'm going to jump straight into Stormhole Silver. And what I will try to do is the thinnest edge highlight I can. It's very important because this is a very strong jump that we do a very, very thin edge highlight. With all done, there's only three things left to paint. His face, the loincloth, and the flames. And I'm going to start by coating the flesh before moving on. And for this, I'm going to use dark wool flesh. Remember to always go back and absorb any excess. Once 
while the dark with flesh drawings I'm going to shade his tabards and for this I'm going to use a Space Wolves Grey. But instead of doing an overall layer thin down with contrast medium, just because I don't like to re-highlight with near white colors, and we have a very lovely off-white color there already, I'm going to glaze this, mixing it with contrast medium. Super thin as you can see, and just going to put this into the recesses basically. And go applying, feathering it out so it's smooth, and keep on building this until I'm happy with it basically. With the shading done, it's time to highlight the white loincloth. And for this, I'm going to use pure white because, well, we didn't touch any of the mid-tones really, so we can just move straight up into highlighting and I'm just going to do a very simple edge highlight. With the white cloth done, I'm going to move into his face and the first highlight will be Flayed One Flesh. And to me, the key of painting faces is being very is being very aware of the zenithal approach here. So concentrate your highlights towards the upper facing surfaces on his features. And of course the top of the head, obviously. I have my paint thinned down into a heavy glaze consistency as usual for this kind of things. And I will do as many passes as I need to get a solid coat on the top of his head especially. And with the highlight of Red One Flesh done, I'm going to move into Palette Witch Flesh. And I chosen to do a very pale kind of look, just because I don't know. To me it feels like Emperor's Children should be pale, but you might have a different opinion here. I also added that extra bit of shading into the eyes and into the mouth, just in anticipation for the next steps. And again, a heavy glaze with palette witch flesh onto the top, especially here on the front, where all the attention is going to be. With this kind of paler colors, I like to feather them out a little bit after applying the glaze. And with the highlights done on the face, it's time to add some hues because he looks a bit lifeless. And for this I'm going to use Volubus Pink uh, thin down with Contrast Medium to create a glaze. And I'm going to apply this glaze with this sort of consistency. You know, almost not there. And I'm going to apply this onto the nose, under the cheeks, and I concentrated it a lot on this side of the face which seems to be like burned. And we will, I will do several passes on this side just to emphasize that. Leave that first coat to dry and apply a second one and as many coats as you need to get to a result that you are happy with. And with the done, I'm going to do one more highlight with Palibridge Flesh over the main features. So off camera I spent a little bit more time working on his face because his face is very important in this mini in particular. And I just use the same colors that I've been using, just moving them around, playing with them, just refining everything until I was, well, more or less happy with it. And now I'm going to move into the eyes and the teeth. And for this I'm going to base coat the eyes with palette witch flesh. And I'm going to paint his teeth too trying to paint each tooth individually. With that done, I'm going to move into painting the eyes themselves. And for this, I'm going to use a black and I'm just going to paint the dot in the middle. Even 
If you're not happy with the positioning of the eye, you can always modify it with Polywood Flesh. And with that done, there's only just the white reflection left to paint. And for this, I'm just going to use white. And the idea here is to make a very, very small dot inside of the black area. And with all that done, it's time to move into the flames. And for this, I'm going to start with one part warp lightning and one part tesseract glow. Again, this was cleaned up using Corax white previously. You don't really need to be very careful with this because we are going to add OSL after this. So, well, that will be pretty much part of the OSL at that point. And with this same mix while it dries, you can start adding the OSL. For this, I'm going to thin this down into a glaze consistency. And I'm going to apply this into the areas that I think will catch some of that green light. I'm going to apply as many layers of this as I need until I'm happy with the effect. With that done, I'm going to move into adding a bit more darkness onto the top of the flames. And for this, I'm going to use pure Warpstone Glow. And I will apply it and I will feather it out just to the top section of the flames. And then I'm feathering it out to create a smooth blend. With that first layer of Warp Lightning dry, I'm going to apply a second one. But this time I'm going to concentrate it towards the tops reaches of the flames. So the same but more focused And with that dry, I'm going to apply the last layer of contrast. This will be Pterodon Torquoise. And I will apply just this to the very top. This will be sort of the equivalent of the uh, smoke effects with black that we usually do with normal fire. All the contrast layers are dry and I can start highlighting the flame, so to speak, because I'm going to apply mood green, but in the recesses. And what I will do with mood green is basically pick up any recesses that are too dark uh, about at this part of the flame. Because remember, in a flame, the hottest part will be the brightest. And the hottest part of the flame is always at the bottom. Now I'm going to do exactly the same, but using a one-to-one -one mix of tone yellow and mood green. This time I will try to pick smaller sections or deeper sections or go uh, much, much lower. And now I'm going to move into pure dawn yellow. And this will be the brightest point in our fire. So just picking up the very, very deepest speeds. Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. The fire is basically done and I'm very happy with it, but we need to emphasize the OSL a bit more, especially here on the shoulder pad where it meets, where it's really close to the fire. And for this, I'm going to go with, with mood green and do a sort of a heavy glaze like that. Also picking up the spikes here. And of course, going to go to the one-to-one -one mix of tone yellow and mood green for a final highlight. And if it gets a bit harsh, you can always smooth it out with mood green again. It's very difficult to paint this 
from behind the flame basically otherwise the camera is not going to pick it up and now we just need to highlight the smoke effects and for this i'm going to go for a one-to-one -one mix of sotek green and gauche blaster green i'm going for a very weird highlight color hope it works well Now I'm going to move into two parts, Gauss Blaster Green and one part Sotek Green. And finally, pure Gauss Blaster Green. You could probably just use grays, but I wanted to give it a little bit of fun touch to the uh, smoke. And with that step done, our Emperor's Children is finished. And by the way, I will leave a link to where you can see how I painted this base in the top right corner. I just changed the colors from the greens to the blues that I use on the smoke effects. And guys, thank you very much for being there through all of this time. And thank you very much for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. I have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links to your next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. I finally have a link for the brushes that I use down there. Don't forget to check the merch that you can see just below this video in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for generosity. As I said guys, thank you very much for watching and a special thank you to Heather Armstrong, Nicholas Furnell, Brian Bledsoe, Green Guard, LMAP Limited, Terrinosaur, Carlos Rivera, Chris Gothenthal, Christoph Moret, Gaining Wit, Javi Mota, Kim Anderson, Michael Boye, Robert Smith, Thomas Ustergaard, Tom Brand, Victor Domen, Dark Kavok, Arundel, Charles Armintas, Chris Broga, Chris Fiby, Kirino Murthal, Chris Talios, Dan Mako, Darcy Farrar, David Sutherland, Dr. V, Gareth Smith, Geoffrey Dell, G Force, Gene Rollins, Jack Scoten, Jamie Milligan, Jim Kennan, Josh Simpson, JT Butler, Kevin Mian, Kevin Sulas, Donald Lindman, Liam Clancy, Mark Jarvis, MCJ, Michael Wakeman, Natius Maximus, Nick DeMao, Oscar Jonathan Thornberg, Paul Bland, Roger Nilsson, Samuel Sasha Park, Stephanie Olan, Tasted for being the coolest persons in the planet. Be like these fine folks on my Patreon and take control.